Okay, apologies for the first two lines. They're a little bit obscene, but it was a device I was using, which I said gets attention. So I hope this works. Tell us again about toilet paper, Grandpa, says Lewis with a grin, his hand in a wiping motion. The younger siblings snicker in unison, hands covering mouths. That's not nice, probably not true, and certainly not for discussion around the table at family forum and recharge, says his mother. Scowling at Grandad, she says, the old order was dead and buried at least two generations before you were even born. You remember nothing. It's all just hearsay. Turning to the children, she adds, you don't have to eat like animals in the forest. Just be grateful for that. Nobody questions it anymore. As far back as the 21st century, it was obvious we couldn't produce enough food to feed the ever-increasing number of people on the planet. Change was needed. Nature sent the pandemic as a reminder. But nature's warning was not enough. Some would have to suffer and sacrifice so others, and mankind, can survive. Lewis, finish your recharge, then go do your daily memory erasing in the basement. She turns rigidly and addresses her aged father. And dad, no more, no, no more of this nostalgia filth or I'll turn you in. I swear I will. Quietly dropping a gaze, she adds, for the sake of the family. Lewis hits the end button, which shuts off the blood supply and drains away his discarded matter. He leaves the room, but whether or not he would do his memory erasure is another matter. Grandpa looks furtively around and follows them out. Why can't we know about the old order, Mum, says five-year-old Graham. All we hear is Grandpa's naughty bits when he visits his friends and drinks the stuff you told us not to talk about. This is important, darling, says Mum. You say nothing to anyone about the things Grandpa tells you, otherwise they'll take Grandpa away and you'll not see him again. Would that be so bad, yeah. to little Andy, looking to Graham for acknowledgement of his wit? This is a bridge too far for mum. Go to your room, both of you. She turns to her partner and waits till the boys are out of earshot. Wide-eyed and with a sigh, she says, and Lewis has been disciplined at school again, won't stop querying where the good blood comes from. In a distant place, Bedraggled men and women silently line up, soiled grains wretchedly clinging to their faces. One after another, they raise their arms and insert them into the tube, where one after another, huge needles penetrate their surgically enlarged veins. One after another, they flinch as the vacuum goes to work. Lewis flops down on the basement couch, hands behind his head. Grandpa... Why are we not meant to know about where the good blood comes from? You told me it's because there's not enough food to, to feed everyone, but how does this help? Well, this way they have control of how and where the scarce resources are being used. Only the most bland and basic vegetation is consumed. Lewis is still puzzled. His question largely unanswered. Grandpa continues. Every essential for your growth and well-being is in the blood, and in precisely the right quantity, no excess, no waste. And you set the virtual appreciator according to how long a pause in your activities you need to savour the nutrition. Lewis knew all this, this only too well. He shook his head slowly, his gaze unable to penetrate the old man's defences. What is dementia, Granddad? Why do Mum and Dad say you may have it? And that's why you make up these stories. You see, Lewis, the powers that be don't need us old is worse than that. They don't want us around with our inkling of the past. So we are sent off for a wonderful end of life experience. Sounds great. Don't you believe it? They lie about everything. But, but where do you think you do go? And I know we're not allowed to ask, but who is this they? Suddenly his grandfather was short of breath, his speaking laboured. Oh, Lewis, quick, get me to a mind replanner. I'm being read. There's still time to backtrack. 
but there wasn't. His breathing slowed right down. He realized he was being terminated. His last words to his grandson were, fight on, Lewis. Putram technology was developed by humans and can be dismantled by humans. Putin and Trump are long gone, but their planned master race thrives, but only for the privileged few. Countless millions are paying the price. You're just one of the lucky ones. How did those two get away with it, Glenn We were taught that they held opposing ideologies. Nonsense. They both wanted personal power, that's all. They made, they made a deal. And everyone went along with it. I, I guess no one really knows. But sooner or later, so someone, somewhere, who, Granddad, someone will do what? They hurt a lot of people, Lewis. I am running out, can't go on. There, there, are, there are groups. El Salvador has several. They are known as Desk Descent. His head dropped. Grandpa was gone. In a basement in San Salvador, a meeting of descendants of the separated is being called to order. I'd like to welcome Vlad from Free Ukraine. Vlad has been successful in tracing his lineage back six generations to where Putin, yes, there really was a Putin, when he invaded what was then a former, a former part of Russia, or rather the Soviet Union. It's a wasteland now with no name. It was once a thriving democracy called Ukraine. We got off lightly. Our ancestors were just separated from their parents trying to get into the United States. Theirs were slaughtered mercifully by a tyrant now known to have been suffering from roid rage, a cognitive disorder akin to dementia caused by the overuse of bodybuilding steroids. Our mandate, as you know, is to return the world to the pre-Trump, pre-Putin era. Mum said Graham, if I'm going to be a writer, I want to learn more about what makes a tyrant a tyrant. I've searched online and there's zilch. Everything in the Putin garden is rosy. She was struck by his correct use of metaphor. Maybe Grandad just had a wild imagination. All I've been able to find is a character called Rasputin. Were they related or did he, did he inspire Putin to take part of his name? No, Graham, please don't pursue this. As you get more mature, your misunderstanding will be tolerated less. There is no connection between the two. Rasputin was an unstoppable, deranged individual who no one could quite fathom out. A troublesome realization was invading her face at the onslaught of an approaching storm. <laughs>